Cool. Okay, and today I'm having a chat with a multi-talented and highly motivated musician, Brendan Pip Ald. Some of you may know of his work with one of the many bands he has been involved in. I'm just going to mention the current bands you got going on as well, and I'll talk about, no doubt, some of the past bands you've been involved in. But the current bands you're involved in is Descent and Siberian Hell Sounds, in which you play guitar, and you're also drummer for Consumed. And if that isn't keeping you busy enough, you also run your own recording studio, which is Black Blood Audio up in the Brisbane area, I, I'm gathering, yes? Yeah, yeah. And you also, if that doesn't keep you busy enough, you also have a solo project called Snorlax, and you've currently released, recently released, sorry, your um, third EP, um, which follows on from the Splintering demo, and the second one was The Spirit of Darkness, and this one's called Just Two, is it? Yeah. Uh, I was going to call it Infernal Devourment, like the title of the yep. first track, but I don't know, Pete from the, Peter Bursky from Brilliant Emperor just thought that two sounded really tough, so I was happy to leave it like that, yeah. Yeah. It, it kind of implies that there's a first release and then another one coming as well, I guess. Yeah, yeah, and it kind of like, your demo kind of just put out there what you're kind of doing with Snorlax, and I suppose um, two kind of is your, your second really serious um, EP, eh, or... Yeah, essentially, the first demo was just a bunch of songs that didn't really fit with my other bands that I was yep. just kind of working on some strange production ideas and stuff, and then I put it out, and strangely enough, people overlooked the stupid name and, like, wanted to take it seriously, so when, like, a label approached me to put that out on tape, I was, I thought it was pretty funny, actually. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, all my other bands are serious, and Snorlax is kind of, like, half serious. Half serious. It would have been kind of cathartic, though, because we'll talk about your other bands, but with um, Snorlax, because we were saying you're involved with so many other bands, I suppose Snorlax would have been kind of cathartic for you to kind of um, lay down some vocals, put down the lyrics, and probably all the stuff that you're not really going to do with your other bands like Descent and Consumed and um, Siberian Hell Sounds as well, sorry. So it's probably... Is it more that way? Yeah, it's super self-indulgent. It's, like, really my own vision kind of without anyone else's input or any any other sort of ideas that waver from my initial stuff that I like or don't like and um, it, yeah it was cathartic there was a lot of like stressful shit I was going through sort of late last year that was good to just focus on writing those songs and working on that stuff keep me preoccupied so that come through a lot, a lot in your songwriting a lot of the things that, that you're going through at the time was it? Yeah, I mean, all the lyrics are either just really stupid or <laughs> so layered in metaphors that you would never really pick up on what I'm talking about in the first place, so yeah. it, it can be interpreted however it wants. Yep. How, how long were you working on this EP and that, the, the solo stuff? How long were you working on this specific T1? Um, not as long as you'd think. I'd sort of, like, uh, punched all the songs into Pro Tools just as guitar track demos with program drums and then... I'd sort of spent a couple of weeks learning the songs in my own time after, uh, it was sort of from when we got, when I got back from Europe in 2018 with Siberian, there was a couple of months where we weren't playing too many shows or anything like that, and I had a bit of time to just write riffs, and then an opportunity came up in December following that, uh, for someone had cancelled at a studio in Brisbane for a really big drum room, um, and they needed to fill the date, so I got a really cheap day, and I just thought, you know what, I'm going to... I'm just going to drink a bunch of Red Bull and track the whole thing in one day. So I did like all the drums and all the guitars in one day at that studio. And then uh, from there, I, that gave me the foundation to just keep building on it. So it wasn't really like writing the songs and then going to record them. Yep. I had the foundation recorded once all the initial ideas had been structured and then um, everything was just sort of built on top of that. Writing the lyrics and vocals was all all the leads and layers of guitars and all that stuff. The bass, everything was just done at my studio at home, just sort of written into the final song, and that's how it is. Ah, oh, that's awesome. So you've also got um, a couple of your fellow mates rock up. You've got um, Anthony from Descent um, come in, and he laid down vocals for the imp impending abysmal wretchedness, though. And yeah, Matthew so that, all well. the vocals on that song is him. Yep, yeah, I've seen that. And then you've got Matthew, he's from Siberian Hell Sounds and Consumed as well, eh? Yeah, yeah, so The Resin Tomb was originally a song that him and I and another friend of ours, Perry, had been jamming in the off time when we weren't doing Siberian stuff, and then 
uh, that never really eventuated, so the song got turned into a, a Snorlax sort of version, but um, yeah, it, it might it might resurface again as a Resin Tomb song. Yep. Weren't you in a um, band called Resin Tomb as well, or a project called Resin Tomb at some stage as well? Yeah, so that's uh, that's a band that we've been working on for a while yep. with myself, Matt, and Perry, the drummer of Siberian Hell Sounds. Um, it's it's still in the works. We've got a um, we've got an EP that's nearly finished uh, that'll come out later this year. I look forward to hearing that as well. So this was going to be my first question, man. I wanted to ask how um, that first, because you're an extremely talented musician. People probably don't realise you play guitar, you play drums, as I mentioned in the opening, but you also play bass, you, um, you sing, you've got the recording studio. Can I ask how your first, um, that first passion and love and spark for music um, ignited? Do you remember when that was? Um, yeah, it was in high school when uh, we'd sort of, or just after high school, we'd sort of played in bands doing covers and whatnot, a few friends of mine, um, in year 11 and 12 and that type of thing. And then it wasn't until we'd actually been out and seen some real some real bands and thought, fuck, we could actually do this. Yeah. We, we could write our own songs and we could do this. And so uh, there was a period of time, I think I went and saw Queens of the Stone Age when I was like 18. Yeah. And I was just like, holy fuck, I want to be up there. Uh, I want to I wanna do this and like... Josh Homme had always been super inspiring the way he had his own studio and just did everything himself and um, he was a super creative dude so I was interested in that from the get-go and, and then by the time it came around to us wanting to learn how to record our own demos and buying my first copy of Studio One or Cubase or whatever and then uh, learning how to use that I was just I was hooked immediately I was, I've been super passionate about it everything from the writing and playing side of it all the way through to the recording, finishing, mastering, like the whole the whole process is, yeah, uh, uh, something I really love. Oh, uh, that's unreal. So um, what was your first guitar, mate? Oh, like a, a Samic or some yep. weird brand that you probably wouldn't ever see <laughs> around for more than a couple of seasons. Yeah. Uh, it was like just a stra- black and white Stratocaster, really simple looking yep. thing. Um, yeah, early days was just kind of looking up tabs for Chili Peppers demos and stuff like that. <laughs> <laughs> what were you getting into then? Like you said, Queens of the Stone Age and Chili Peppers. Um, probably the same sort of yeah, stuff pretty, getting into around that age as well, eh? Yeah, yeah, just pretty uh, whatever's like sort of jumping out at me as, as heavy or a bit more than just the norm on the radio or whatever it was. It wasn't until I was like, yeah. 18 or 19 that I actually discovered hardcore and metal and then yeah. every, everything snowballed pretty hard from there. Yeah, that's what I was going to ask. Like, when did it start getting dark and what were those um, first initial bands you were getting into? Like you mentioned hardcore, like um, you, you Die Wolf, you were with Die Wolf and they're an unreal hardcore band. I was sitting there cranking, I love hardcore dude as well. So what was the, the bands that were um, getting you hardcore and the, the heavy stuff leading you towards that darker stuff? Uh, well, yeah, like uh, it wasn't really till a bit later than most people so it was it was just through friends older brothers and that sort of thing coming home wearing t-shirts or being like oh you guys should come see this like uh it it for some reason it took a while for these things to find me um but what was influencing direwolf that's a good question <laughs> um oh man stuff that was happening at the time like the first ghost inside release yep uh band from the uk called gallows like frank carter's original band yep um, stuff that you, yeah you wouldn't expect when you listen to Die Wolf. <laughs> yeah. Um, the Chariot. Yeah. That was a big one at the time. Uh, yeah, it's sort of hard to remember. Yeah. I mean, we were always going to watch Parkway and all that sort of stuff whenever they'd come through town, and it wasn't until we started playing gigs that we got super involved in the local scene. Yeah. Yeah. And black metal, what inspired your passion for black metal? Because Snorlax, um, back to your solo project, has a has those real black metal feels, man, almost like um, your black and death. And, yeah, what, what inspired you kind of to kind of go down black um, metal and want to start working some real black metal stuff? Well, I, I really uh, I have to mention Anthony, the, the singer of Descent. He, um, I've known him for years and years, and we'd always going out skateboarding together and things like that yeah. and I'd always listen to heavy bands and he knew that and then uh, one I think it was uh, Evangelion like the Behemoth record he was yeah. playing that in the car one day and I was just like fuck dude what is this <laughs> this is the missing link between you know like shit I'm not ready for 
than shit that I really enjoy. Yeah. This is the missing link. And he, he was like, yeah. He was like, all right, I'll make a USB with a bunch of black metal and stuff on there. And then, yeah, I was hooked. There was just a, a, a bunch of really unique bands that he'd, he'd been into black metal for years. And he's an encyclopedia about death metal. So he just slowly kept showing me more and more bands. And then that obviously been influencing Descent. But I, I'd sort of taken on from there my own sort of uh, love for like more dissonant black metal yeah. and finding that stuff on my own accord just led me to want to write music that was inspired by the, the sort of weird bands that no one else knows about when I try and mention them it's like what who's Thor what is that <laughs> there's a hundred bands called Thor but I'm like nah this specific one from Poland that sounds really sick and it's like alright whatever I'm like, okay I'm gonna go write a song inspired yeah. by that <laughs> if you guys don't want to do it that's cool that's really cool man it's funny you mentioned Behemoth because that was pretty well the, the missing link in the puzzle for me as well and when I um, it for me it was the Satanist album I put on that and I was just where have I been what have I been doing and it just inspired this whole new love for black metal and appreciation and it kind of did the same as me put me down that, that path of more obscure more underground and just to keep digging and finding out more you know you hear that one band it kind of clicks that something and goes wow what have I been doing yeah, and, and, and it happens every year too. I'll think that I've I've reached a point where I'm like, nah, there's nothing, there's nothing more. And then you'll hear a band and it just floors you immediately and you sort of go, holy fuck, all right, now I've got to reevaluate. Maybe I'm into war metal. I didn't know that was going to happen. Like, <laughs> yeah, it, it, it just keeps evolving. Yeah, it, do, it does. And it's um, we've got all these different niches of metal and I, because I, of purely what I do, I don't, I, I love all metal. I love heavy metal. I'm a metal, metalhead's metalhead. I try not to get myself caught in those little you know those little genres i just i'm constantly floored the same i'm constantly listening to new bands listening to new stuff and i came across you and i've gone and i've just pulled it's like pulling a piece of string i'm going back through more and more of your work just your work alone the last two weeks and it just defloors me it floors me every time i'm hearing the the talent in australia in the underground scene let alone the world oh that's awesome man yeah it really is Uh, unreal but yeah i mean uh, without sort of trying to pocket yourself in yep. each little project, uh, it's sort of, I, I was almost expecting to get a bit of criticism for mixing so many different things together. But um, I think the next couple of projects are going to be a little bit more sort of focused on, on what they're really meant to be. Like, obviously, Necroseptic was like specific, like very strict guidelines. It's going to be my flavor of what I like in Grindcore. Yep. I'm going to stick to that. Cool. Um, yeah, the, like I've got another band in the works called Feculent. It's going to be like the things I do and don't like, <laughs> very black and white. So it's like it's going to be strictly the stuff I do like about death metal yep. and only that. <laughs> uh, yeah, the uh, mixing all the different genres together, it it can only work until a certain point, and then it gets a bit like a, just a big fruit salad. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. So trying to make uh, like a jump from you know, like a thrash beat into a black metal section without it sounding like just a cut and paste switch yeah. of just joining two random things together is always super interesting to me. Yeah, yeah, I, I got to admit, I do love love grindcore, man. I'm looking, I'm looking forward to both those other projects you're working on as well. So, grindcore, there's some really good grindcore Aussie bands at the moment. Um, I noticed Hot Siberian Hell sounds are really cool, and you played with Wounded Pig, uh, Brutality last year. They're a pretty good grindcore underground band. I know both. Jess and Sam, and then you got Meth Leopard. The grindcore scene is unreal, isn't it, at the moment? Yeah, man. Um, they were super impressive, actually. Wounded Pig. We were in the we were in the beer garden. We heard the band start up from outside, and we just thought, "Oh fuck, let's go check this out." And then it wasn't until we got around the corner, and we were like, "Oh, it's no drummer," but yeah. it was still like they were putting in 110. percent It was like you could not be fixated on them. They were going hard. It yeah, was great. Sam's a lot like yourself. He's an extremely talented musician. He can play it all, drums, bass, guitar. Does a lot of that studio work himself at home because they've got kids and a family. So he's he's another musician's musician who can kind of do all that and loves working from home and can play all those instruments as well. So it's unreal. Oh, that's awesome. I love hearing about people like that. i got a few, um, for, uh, Eddie from Shackles, for example. Yep. Friend, friend of mine here in Brisbane, he plays guitar and he also plays drums in a whole bunch of bands. So there's, there's a lot of great people out there who are just doing it all. Yeah. And not 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 for the sake of you know like I want to be I want to be a superstar. They just do it all in the underground. Yep. Because they love it. 
They love music, and like I, I've said this multiple times, and multiple times I've talked to musicians about this. That you're an artist, and it's it's an art, it's an art form, and you're going to keep creating art. You're not just going to stop and not create any art. Like look at the greatest artists out there of the world. They they create and they create their passion because it's what they do and it's what they feel in their soul. And you musicians are no different. Yeah, yeah. It's it's not really being made for anyone else. <laughs> but ourselves exactly and people like myself and mad fans of the underground scene are just going to go along for the ride and support bands like yourself because exactly what you do you do it for the love of it oh, thanks man it's, it's anyone who, who appreciates that stuff and even just acknowledges it or like sends a message or anything that makes people keep doing it because it's easy to make one but to, to follow it up and try and push yourself to do it again yep. is pretty challenging sometimes and, it's, it's, and a lot of bands sort of hit a point where they need to release a full length album and it just doesn't happen because it yep. takes that next level of commitment and yeah, pushing yourself to be creative in a new way exactly and speaking of um, second albums you're currently working on a second album with Descent to follow up on the Towers of Grandiosity album I hear yeah so um, Black Blood itself has been on hold since June last year uh, I had to move house my studio was underneath my house so I had to demolish that yep. um, and pack it all up and I've spent the last six months rebuilding a new one under the house I've moved into now so the live room's finished and we're able to jam and yep. practice here uh, which is awesome so we've been writing heaps yep. uh, I'm nearly finished the control room and then hopefully by the middle of this year we'll have a fully functional studio under our house and we can record the new album awesome. and all the other projects that are waiting to go as well I've well, got that's cool, man. Mates all over Brisbane who are hassling me to do that. But yeah, the Descent albums, um, it's it's actually coming along pretty well. We're playing with Cattle Decap next month. Yeah. We'll play maybe two or three new songs Yep. Uh, at that. They upgraded but, that show as well because it sold out really quick, eh? Yeah, so we're playing the outdoor stage, which will be scary, but that's cool. Yep, and playing with Revocation as well, which is going to be cool. Yeah, yeah. Yep. And yeah, you know, uh, that... Sorry. Yeah, you were going. We were talking before, quickly before we move on. You were saying under your house, people probably don't realise most Queenslanders are up on stilts. So we're not saying you're building a big bunker underneath your home. Most um, Queenslanders are two stories and they have um, stilts there, eh? Yeah, sorry. It's a it's a high set house with a garage underneath, yep. and the garage has been converted into a live room. So yeah, yeah. I'm a <laughs> yeah, Queen, ex Queenslander. As so. that would be, it's not. <laughs> Yeah. It's not a basement. Yeah, I'm an ex-Queenslander, so I, I gathered straight away what you were talking about, but some people are probably thinking, oh, he's got a basement studio? That's awesome, man. But that would be cool, too. Yeah. <laughs> I think that would create a lot of flooding problems in Queensland. Yeah, it would, wouldn't it? We're, we're still battling that anyway. Yeah, yeah, I was up there a couple of years ago for a school reunion, and a mate was driving me around Brisbane and showing me all the um, the watermarks where the floods were every, um, a year or so before that, so it's unreal. Yeah, it's pretty scary, actually. The place we've moved into has got watermarks yep. that are higher than the floor of the studio that uh, we've just built. So, like, we're uh, going to be on high alert yeah, any time there's flood warning. Yep, yep. Uh, speaking about shows with Descent, come back to, um, you've got Earthrot. They've support, got their new album coming out, which is going to be really cool. I'm looking forward to that, The Black Tides of Obscurity. And you're supporting them March with Dis, um, Christ Dismembered as well. Yeah, yeah. Um, so that, that'll be at the new crowbar inside. Um, yep. That's right. Good mates of ours. We've played a bunch of shows with them. Um, and like uh, Cola, the guy, the German guy that mixes like a boarded and stuff, has done their new album and it sounds amazing. So I really hope that does well. Yeah. We played so with Christ Dismembered before. They're super, super crazy. They were really impressive live. They're awesome. Um, so that show will be great. Yeah. Yeah, I love down South Australia, so I've caught Cross Dismembered a whole heap of times, man. Unreal band, eh? They're another band that are just that, that, that are just extremely talented, just sitting up there on the top of the underground scene. And we were talking before how you, you mentioned bands' names, and people are like, who are they? We have that same problem here in Australia. Bands like Earthrot, Cross Dismembered, and all these other great bands that are just kicking ass. You talk about them to some people here in Australia, and they're like, who's that? <laughs> you know, even bands like Nears Bliviscaris and things like that that are doing really well, so. Yeah, there's, there's a definite line between uh, sort of people who are in the know with what's going on with heavy music and then people who are really focusing in on what is happening in the underground. There's, there's always heaps of stuff going on, but you wouldn't know it unless you go looking for it. Yeah, and you just got to keep looking for it, eh? Yeah, 
Definitely. Okay, no worries. I thank you very much, Brendan. I might leave you to it, mate. Thanks very much for having a chat with Crank and myself. I really do appreciate your time, mate. Uh, check out Snorlax, Descent, have some work, um, some shows coming up. They've got an album they've got coming out, so check it all out. Um, Brendan, thanks a lot, mate. Thanks for having a chat, man. No worries.